Nowadays, with social media and YouTube, leaving medicine is glorified. It's almost cool right now to say that you left medicine. You'll see Instagram influencer X or YouTuber Y make the announcement and their audience says, wow, like good for you, or hey, you're so brave, or man, I wish I could do the same, sad emoji. Because of all these stories of people who quit being a doctor and had this other career or life afterwards, and because of social media, it looks so great and amazing, we sometimes think that we should do the same. Well. Leaving medicine is not always what it's hyped up to be, and here's why. What's going on, guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas. The first reason that leaving medicine is overhyped is that only a small percentage of doctors are actually doing it. A big part of why it's perceived as cool right now to leave medicine is because you have a lot of popular YouTubers who are leaving and then posting videos about their new, awesome, exciting endeavors. And yes, I acknowledge the irony there. The problem is that it makes leaving medicine seem more common than it actually is. I mean, when you think about it, a handful of influencers and YouTubers and whatnot, if they leave medicine, that's only a small, tiny fraction of a percent of the medical community, right? What you don't see are the countless physicians who are still practicing and love their job. Now, out of the whole community of physicians, let's say X percentage quit every year to go pursue something else. What you'll see in the YouTube doctor space, which is a much smaller community, right? There's only a handful of them. It's not just X percentage, it's like 10X percentage that are actually leaving and quitting. And we can make a whole nother video exploring why that is. And this is a big part of why I do the Day in the Life series. It's to show everyone that there are doctors out there who love what they do. They can have a work-life balance, enjoy time with their family, you know, pursue their hobbies. But because of the negativity bias that we have as humans, we tend to focus on those videos that portray medicine as being this like, sinking ship, oh my God, all these doctors are quitting, what's going on? But in reality, the overwhelming majority of physicians are still practicing, and a lot of them actually love their jobs. All right, next up is survivorship bias. You generally only see one side of the story when people quit. The people who are public about their decision of leaving medicine are usually the ones who were actually successful. And therefore, your perception is now skewed into thinking that most people who quit must be successful. What you don't see are the people out there whose plans didn't work out, and then they had to course correct. And this is just human nature because we as humans wanna portray ourselves in the best light possible. I mean, saying that you left medicine and it didn't work out is gonna be a lot more challenging to say that you left medicine and it did work out. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that it's never worth it to quit. What I am saying is that there's always gonna be some level of risk involved. Remember that medicine is safe and most of those alternate career options will carry higher levels of risk, but obviously it depends on what you choose to do. And that brings us to number three, risk. Leaving your career is always gonna have some level of risk, and there's no guarantee that it's gonna work out. And YouTubers and other people on social media, they're unique in that they have a lot of these different options to mitigate their downside risk that we as viewers may not always understand fully. And as viewers, it oftentimes seems abrupt, like they just woke up one day, decided they're not gonna do medicine, and then just quit the next. What you often don't see is that they've been considering this for a long period of time, and they've likely been working on things in the background, making some proof of concept or experimenting with what those other options might be. Although we don't have hard numbers on this, I can almost guarantee that the overwhelming majority of people who decided to leave medicine, they didn't just jump ship without a life jacket. They capped that downside potential, the bad things that could happen. Obviously, there are some people that do jump ship without a life jacket, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. When I left medicine, for instance, I already had two businesses that were up and running. I had a little bit of business experience, I had some momentum. It wasn't just jump ship without a life vest. Same with Ali Abdal. He already had multiple streams of income and was making a lot more than he ever would as a doctor before he quit. I'm pretty sure he actually stopped being a junior doctor, which for those in the US is essentially like senior medical student or intern, close to two years before his announcement. So he had stopped a long time before. It wasn't as abrupt as it seems from his announcement. It was actually a very strategic marketing move on his part because people thought that he was a doctor when in reality he was just doing like the YouTube and the other things and had already given up being a junior doctor a long time before. Another example is Christina Braley. So even though she hasn't quit medicine, she's just doing locum tenens, she still had success with her YouTube channel and with her scrubs business before she started reducing her hours. In fact, maybe locums is just a transitional period and she ends up leaving medicine altogether down the road. Who knows? What I'm getting at here is that YouTubers are kind of a special case. They have a lot of different ways to mitigate risk that the general population usually doesn't. Number four, the grass isn't always greener. Medicine has its pros and cons, but so does every other career. Not everyone who leaves medicine will be successful and will have a comparable living to what they would as a doctor, especially right after leaving. If you're thinking that leaving medicine is gonna give you an amazing lifestyle, you'll make more money. I mean, look at all these successful physicians who quit. 
then you'll probably be in for a rude awakening. The odds are more in your favor to make mid six figures as a doctor than just about any other profession. But that comes with a huge asterisk because as I love to say, statistics apply to populations, not to individuals. And you can find some sweet, sweet merch that says that linked below this video. When I left medicine to pursue entrepreneurship, I was actually working more hours than I did in a surgical residency and I was only pulling in $1,000 a month. Yeah, I couldn't even make rent. And that's why a lot of the earlier videos on this channel were filmed in my mom's backyard. Because obviously that's what every late 20s MD wants to do after grinding their butt off for the past decade, right? Is to move back home and live with their mom. Most weeks I was putting in more than 100 hours building the business because that's often what it takes in the early stages. So if you think leaving would be great because you'll make more money for less work, realize the grass isn't always greener. You may be leaving the devil you know for the devil you don't. And finally, there are a lot of positive things about a career in medicine that seem to be getting overlooked and underemphasized. Being a doctor can be immensely satisfying. People come to you with a very personal, deep, important problem, and because of your training and your knowledge, you're able to help them. You have the privilege of helping people through the most challenging times in their lives. And then there's also the personal development that comes with that that's incredibly satisfying. I don't think enough people talk about it. Essentially, the pathway to becoming a doctor is very difficult. It's very challenging, it's long and arduous, and in doing so, you have to become a certain kind of person. You aren't born a doctor, you become one. When I look back to when I first started medical school back at 21, and now I'm 31, so 10 years ago, I'm grateful for the experience and how it shaped me over the years. Without that pressure and that forcing function, I wouldn't be the same person that I am today. Also, being a doctor can be really exciting. Although I can't speak for every specialty or for what you find exciting personally, I definitely found medicine to be incredibly exciting. There was always something new, no two days were the same. As a physician, you're constantly encountering new challenges that keep you on your toes and they force you to learn and grow. Once you find that specialty that really suits you, like plastic surgery did for me, it's gonna be super exciting. Here's a great place to start in choosing the right specialty for you, and you can also check out our So You Want To Be playlist on Med School Insiders. Next up, let's talk about compensation. Although people love to talk about the opportunity cost and the limitations with a physician's salary, at the end of the day, you are gonna be a top 5% earner as a doctor. Unlike a lot of these other fields where you may have a higher income, let's say a senior programmer at a fang company, as a doctor, it's a relatively guaranteed path to a high income. Granted, there is a lot of uncertainty with getting into medical school, but once you're there, it's just a matter of walking the path laid in front of you, which I will admit is easier said than done. The average primary care physician makes over a quarter million dollars per year, and the average specialist makes $368,000 per year. And yes, there are obviously a lot of factors that go into making this salary possible, things like the opportunity costs, the student loans, the stress, etc. But at the end of the day, it is a pretty high income. As a physician, it's pretty unlikely that you'll come across a time where you can't put food on the table or provide for your family. That being said, no, you're probably not gonna make fuck you money as a doctor. You still need to be smart with your finances. You don't wanna be one of those doctors that's living large, big house, fancy cars, that's living paycheck to paycheck. That's why I said it's a guaranteed path to high income, but not to wealth. If you are decent and smart with your finances, then financially, you should be ahead of most people by the time you hit your 40s. Next up is job security. Medicine is always gonna be an in-demand field. We're already seeing shortages of doctors in a number of specialties, and this is likely only going to increase with time. According to projections from the AAMC, the US will likely experience shortages of approximately 38,000 to 124,000 physicians by the year 2034. And these shortages are driven by a number of factors, including, First, a growing population. The US population is projected to grow by 10.6% between now and 2034. There's the aging population. There's a projected 42% increase of US adults aged 65 and older. There's the aging physician population who are no longer gonna be practicing. And then finally, the increased access to care. As we expand access to care to marginalized minority populations, people living in rural communities, and people without health insurance, we're gonna need additional physicians to meet demand. These are just a few examples of the pros and cons of going into medicine. Everyone has their own reason for becoming a doctor, and with all the negativity towards medicine as of late, I think it's good to remind ourselves it's not all that bad. Just as I think the general population tends to overhype medicine as a career and the perks of being a doctor, I feel like once you're in medicine, the medical community, they have a way of underhyping it and being overly critical of the field. In reality, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Although I don't think a career as a physician is right for everyone, 
It would be a shame for any pre-meds or would-be doctors to be discouraged from all this negativity as of late. Now, obviously, have both eyes wide open, educate yourself, learn the pros and the cons, listen to the people who are critical, listen to their insights, their feedback, what they have to say, but make your own conclusions. If you fixate on the bad, you're gonna forget what makes medicine a great profession, and it's gonna color your whole perception, and you're gonna view things in a more negative way. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy Why Doctors Are Leaving Medicine or this other video. Much love, my friends, and I'll see you all in that next one.